<laughs> Welcome to the Ventura Center for Spiritual Living. I'm Reverend Bonnie Rose, and it's so great to have you here, whether you're here in person or whether you're watching online. We are a center for transformation, the Transformation Temple, coined a phrase coined by our greeter, Jana. We are also the cathedral, no, the Kindness Cathedral. I'm just going to quit while I'm ahead <laughs> and pass it over to Lonnie, our board president. <laughs> Good morning. Gosh, Bonnie, it feels, it feels, I don't know, very energetic in here today. It does, yes. Yeah. Yes. I'm really noticing a lot of kindness and gratitude, like, emanating. Oh, good So, to know. yeah, I mean, we have these beautiful greeters. We've got so many wonderful practitioners and our, our tech team, which reminds me, if you're with us at home on Facebook, can you share our link so that everyone can join in in this wonderful spiritual day of transform transformation. <laughs> It's a very big word. We're working it on it. It is a very big word. Yeah. <laughs> I think kindness is just the way to go. Kindness is good too, yeah. So settle in. We've got a great day for you, and we're just so happy that you're here. Thanks, Lonnie. Thank you so much. And then we're calling forth Mr. Bill, who is our youth and family person, who's going to enlighten us with useful wisdom. Useful <laughs> wisdom. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Bill Hadris with Youth and Family. Do you know... It's okay to be different. All people are individual expressions of the one God. So I'd like you to look around you, your left and your right a little. How many haircuts look just like yours? <laughs> How many shirts? or uh, outfits look like what you're wearing? Well, I think Lonnie and, and Bill Fontana <laughs> look kind of alike. <laughs> <laughs> if we all get up to dance in a little bit when Mr. Ray Davis sings one of his songs, are we going to all be dancing the same way? Hope so. Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> so I invite you to close your eyes, Drift within for a moment and think. Who do you feel comfortable showing yourself to? Do you act differently with other people? Think of one of the ways you act differently. How does that make you feel? When we try to be someone who we are not born to be, we end up feeling really bound up. When you express the freedom you are born to be, you are expressing God as you. So I invite you to repeat after me. It's good to be me. It's good to be me. And so it is. And so it is. And um, I also just wanted to say a word of thanks for Bill, who has just been just, just sticking it out through this pandemic. And um, I had the opportunity to meet with the parents and the youth leaders the other day and, and just was so overcome with praise for Susie, who is our new le youth leader now, and also Bill, who's been with us for years. And was so touched to remember how when... Um, his kids were young, and they would come up and like do um, calisthenics on the stage or acrobatics and whatnot. And and uh, Garrett, I hope I don't put you in the spot. Would, would you stand up? Garrett was the youngest, and look at him now. <laughs> so we can have a real impact on the youth of our community. So bring them on down for the petting zoo. If they never come back, that's cool too, but at least they'll have gotten a taste of what the VCSL energy is like. So thank you, and thank you so much, Bill, for all of your service. <laughs> And now we go still deeper as we breathe and relax and let go and allow ourselves to be fully present here in the, in the glory of this moment, in this precious moment that is made precious simply because it exists, but amplified through our willingness to be together and our willingness to serve and to cherish that which is. Let us open our hearts to cherish even deeper the nature of reality and our place in it as we listen to the words of our sacred reading from the Book of Tokens. 
22 Meditations on the Ageless Wisdom by Paul Foster Case. This is an excerpt from the Meditation on Aleph. I am without beginning, without end, older than night or day, younger than the babe newborn, brighter than light, darker than darkness, beyond all things and creatures, yet fixed in the heart of every one. For me the shining worlds flow forth, to me all at last return. Yet to me neither men nor angels may draw nigh, for I am known only to myself. Ever the same is mine inmost being, absolutely one, complete, whole, perfect, always itself, eternal, infinite, ultimate, formless, indivisible, changeless. Of all existence, I am the source, the continuation, and the end. I am the germ, I am the growth, I am the decay. All things and creatures I send forth, I support them while yet they stand without, and when the dream of separation ends, I cause their return unto myself. I am the life, I am the wheel of the law, and the way that leadeth to the beyond, there is none else. Before all worlds I was, in all worlds I am, and when worlds are but a memory, I shall be. So all of that I am-ness, that which always is, always was, always shall be, that is what we hold in consciousness. That is what we remember as we sing together, I am remembering who I am. We not only remember our true nature, we invest in it through our song, through our embodied knowing of it, through singing. And as we invest in our true nature and the nature of reality and our place in it, we do this on behalf of all beings everywhere. Let us sing together, I am remembering who I am. staying in the light of that divine remembrance. We bring our awareness of what is, the precious nature of being, the precious nature of who we are. And we breathe in deeply, and then we exhale, opening our eyes to welcome what is, in love and in service to what is as it is, and so it is. Good morning. The two songs I'll be presenting this morning are, in, um, are related to what Reverend Bonnie and I are going to be talking about. This first song is a song of devotion.
from the fading light of the evening to the growing glow of the day I am perfectly perfectly held in your hands my one and as the sun ascends to its glory and in beauty gives its rays I stay surrounded for in you I live and move have my being do I love you my one I do there is none to love but you there is nothing that can undo my love for you, my one. If I feel afraid for my future or believe that no one really cares, still I'm perfectly, perfectly held in your hands, my one, my one. So whether I ascend in bright ecstasy or fall in dark despair, I'm there surrounded. For there's nowhere where your love can't find me. Do I love you, my one I do? There is none to love but you. There is nothing that can undo my love for you, my one, my one. Barukata Adonai, my one. nothing else to love from below to above my one here all of creation sing to you my love my to love but you there is nothing that can undo my love for you my one my one my one my one So Ray, you're center stage because I'm just I'm just a prop in your miniseries today. <laughs> but before we get started, I just gosh, Ray. <laughs> Seriously, I mean that um, I'm I'm a little verklempt, I got to tell you because it's such, such a, a word. yeah it's such a. <laughs> <laughs> it's Yiddish, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, actually, I was thinking of Rumi when you were when you were 
playing that. I know it's, it's based on Kabbalah, but um, it's, you know, Rumi was so ecstatic about his love for, yeah. for the one. And, yeah, yeah. and I think I am in this moment too. So. Yes, yes. <laughs> and I hope others are as well. well that, that, is, that, is, that is it. Yeah. That is it. That yeah. is it. And I think you, are, you are ecstatic in your devotion. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Oh. Absolutely. Should we just sit up here and cry together? Would I that think be we okay? should. <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we did have a plan. It did not involve crying. So I'm going to go back to the plan, which um, was first of all to ask you, so um, this, this talk is about uh, Kabbalah or Kabbalah, you said both ways, and, and it's really of Jewish mysticism. And um, Ray, would you tell us a little bit about what Kabbalah is? I'd be happy to. Mm -hmm. So first of all, thank you everyone for um, opening your hearts to hearing a little bit of, of uh, that which means so much to me. And thank you, Reverend Bonnie, for opening the, uh, the church and the opportunity oh, to talk about this sort of stuff. So, uh, Kabbalah, and you know, you say Kabbalah, I say <laughs> Kabbalah, you say Meda, I say Kabbalah. I love it. <laughs> uh, uh, Kabbalah is, is um, referred to as the, the received teachings, received teachings. And uh, yes, it is principally Jewish mysticism. However, uh, I would like to uh, insert something here that's very important. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Kabbalah is not an English word. It is a Jewish word, and hence is written in Hebrew. It's Hebrew letters. Uh, and m Hebrew words, when they're translated into English using Roman characters, there are challenges because there are certain Hebrew letters that really have no easy fit. So Kabbalah can be spelled with a K, or also can be spelled with a C, or with a Q. Mm. And those spellings also denote um, versions. So Kabbalah with a K is specifically Jewish mysticism. Mm. Kabbalah with a C is Christian mysticism. Kabbalah with a Q is Hermetic mysticism. Mm. My... Um, journey in Kabbalah is more the Q and C side of things. <laughs> now the differences are technical, so we won't speak to those differences today. We're going to speak to things that are probably uh, agreed upon by uh, those who follow the various strains. Mm -hmm. But I'm a Q kind of Kabbalah guy. <laughs> and, and you said that Q was... Hermetic. 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 Okay. And those of you might, you, you might be f familiar with the idea of Hermeticism or Hermes. Uh, specifically Hermes Trismegistus, mm -hmm. Hermes thrice great. He's not only great, he's great, great, great. <laughs> maybe not everybody oh, oh, sorry, yes. knows what that yep. is. So. Well, Hermes <laughs> refers to a, 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 an old uh, deity or a messenger of the gods that goes back to Egyptian times. And Hermes was uh, reputed to be a teacher, the teacher of teachers, mm -hmm. as mystical as you can get. You want to know what's going on in the universe? You know, tug on Ernie, Hermes' uh, robe. You check out Hermes. Yeah, check okay, out Hermes, Okay, good yeah. to know. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Um, and, and you know that we bless all paths to God, so this all just really... Oh, it does. ...really fits in with our, yeah, our yeah, yeah, philosophy yeah. In, this, mm -hmm. in this center. Mm -hmm. um, so, so what is... Now, so, okay, we're talking about mysticism versus more run-of-the-mill teachings. Do yeah. You, do you and have an answer about that? Yeah, yeah, mysticism okay. as opposed to, uh, you know, orthodoxy. No, uh, mysticism. In other words, I'm not always interested in the what, but I'm interested in the how. Mm -hmm. I'm interested in the connection between me, where I am, and this state that I can just sort of feel is true. Mm -hmm. I, I have a hint. I have an idea. I don't know how you ended up in New Thought, mm -hmm. but I had an idea. After years and years and years of rejecting spirituality, which came after years and years and years and years of growing up in a, uh, a fairly traditional Protestant denomination, Protestant Christian denomination, which I love to this day, mm -hmm. but it just wasn't answering all the questions for me. Mm -hmm. And there was a hint of something else, and I thought I would find it in ag agnosticism, so for quite a long time, I denied the existence of anything. Mm -hmm. I couldn't prove it. I just doubted it, that it was wrong. Mm -hmm. And then at about uh, 2005, late 2005, all throughout 2006, um, I, I believe that life was trying to kill me. Mm. That is to say, I put myself into situations and conditions that 
uh, on the outside looked really good and admirable, but on the inside I was miserable. Mm -hmm. So I was seeking answers to that misery. Mm -hmm. And I got a hint uh, from a book some of y'all might be familiar with, uh, The Secret. Mm -hmm. And uh, through that I moved on to um, uh, Wallace D. Waddle's book called The Science of Getting Rich. I remember that, yeah. Yeah. Wasn't that, isn't that a great name? <laughs> yeah. What up? My name is Wallace. Wallace Waddles. <laughs> I love it. I like that. With the yeah. what up, it makes yeah, it really special. It does, it yeah. does add a little <laughs> yeah. flavor to it. Uh, but, uh, you know, in, in his book, he mentions, um, of course, the idea of wealth and that sort of thing. Uh, but he mentions spiritual laws that he's not going to talk about in the book. And I wanted to know what those laws were. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. May I stop you for one sec? Please do. Yes, yeah, so one of, the, one of the things we, a lot of us here, <clears throat> um, study the writings of Tosha Silver. Mm. Who she, so she's, a, um, she's a, a mystic who knows about the secret, but she also says, you know, the law of attraction is not the only thing. That's right. <laughs> and she uses a lot of Eastern religions to kind of tie in uh, laws that are, laws of spirituality that are, that are engaged in that uh, tradition as well. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like you had a similar experience. I did, yes. yeah, yeah. Because it, it can't be just this. It's, it can't just be that. Yeah. 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 Otherwise, everything would just be sticking to each other. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Thank, bless, blessed Redeemer that the law of attraction <laughs> doesn't work all of the time because yeah. that would be scary. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. So, um, mm -hmm. so I, I found my way to, um, to Agape, Agape mm -hmm. International Spiritual Center. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it, sort of like the old mov the, uh, movie quote, you had me at hello. Mm. <laughs> it had me at right, right at the beginning. I was hooked. Mm. Uh, which is an interesting bit of uh, imagery to think of. Hook, a fish hook. Uh -huh. Well, there's that, because it applies it. to Kabbalah. If, does if you it? Don't, yeah, oh, it yeah. does. It does. Yeah. Uh, see, is, is the image on the screen? Yeah. Okay, some of y'all might not be able to see much of this, but uh, if, if you can't, I invite you to go ahead and, you know, use your search engine to find um, Tree of Life and look for something that looks kind of like this. But what you'll notice is that along, well, might as well talk about the Tree of Life, it's Hachaim. It's Hachaim. Tree of Life uh, is, consists of ten circles, or they actually refer to as emanations, or in, or in Hebrew, sefirot. Ten emanations in three columns, or pillars. And between the sefirot, there are paths. And then each of the there are, there are you know, ten emanations in 22 paths. Mm. So the whole thing is called 32 paths of wisdom. Each of the paths which connect the sefirot, um, there is, you might be able to see, uh, just faintly, Do there's a there card. Yeah, there's a card on each path. And those are tarot cards. The tarot? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. my gosh, when you said 22, I'm like, wait, 22 cards in the, okay. Yeah. <laughs> here we go. Okay, there. Yeah, yeah. Tarot so <laughs> there, are, there are 22 cards, tarot cards, and they're not all of the deck. The whole deck is 78 cards. These are the 22 major arcana. The, ma the trumps, you know. And so, you yeah, 22 paths, or 22 paths, yeah, and each one has a card. And I spoke of the fish hook. <laughs> one of those paths has a card on it that is also associated with a Hebrew letter because there are 22 Hebrew letters. You catching the connection <laughs> there? Yeah. yeah. And that Hebrew letter is tzadi, tzadi. And tzadi means... Fish hook. Hmm. I got caught on the tzadi <laughs> at agape. So when Jesus says, "I will make you fishers of men," yes, is he talking about that? He's talking about the idea. The of that. idea. Yes, he's talking okay. about the idea of that because that didn't exist when Jesus was here. Okay, then yeah. the idea of that, yeah. but the yeah. idea yeah. existed long yeah. before Jesus. Yeah, I will make you fishers yeah. of men. Now, here, oh, oh, there's so much. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> one of the beautiful things about Yeshua is that he spoke of this without speaking of this. Mm -hmm. So, I will make you fishers of men. What does that mean exactly? Well, that which hooked Yeshua, because there was something that hooked Yeshua. Mm -hmm. He was flesh and blood like y'all and me. I am flesh and blood, right? Okay. <laughs> 
he was hooked so he can hook. Mm. He was angled so that he can angle. And that is, a that is an opportunity available to each of us. See, one of the things that um, Kabbalah teaches so beautifully is, well, it's, it's summarized in a, in, a, in a statement that you've probably heard before, as above, so below. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As above, so below means exactly that. What you can observe in the heavens. As the scripture says, uh, uh, the heavens are telling the glory of God and the firmament shows forth its handiwork. What you're able to observe in the heavens can be observed here on earth. Mm -hmm. What can be observed here on earth the greater can be observed in earth the lesser. Mm -hmm. Or the greater universe to the lesser universe. The macro, macrocosm and the microcosm. Mm -hmm. There are correlations. There are patterns. There are things that show that can be instructive to us to lead the life that is uh, more abundant, as Yeshua said. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It came that they might have life and have it more abundantly. More abundantly, sure. You know what that reminds me of, too, is the Gospel of Thomas when it says, uh, the, king, mm. the kingdom of heaven is spread upon the earth, but men do not see it, but we Ooh. do not see it. You know, Ooh. and, and this seems like it's a, it's, a, um, it's a pathway to seeing the kingdom of heaven spread upon the earth. Yes, right? it is. Yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah. That yeah. is a beautiful summary. Mm -hmm. I wish mm -hmm. I'd said it. Can I, well, can I, yes, can I feel, take credit for it? Feel free. You take credit for it. Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> you inspired it, so there you go. Well, yeah. well again, back to this thing, <laughs> yeah. you know, because at the top of that tree, uh, the very first emanation, Sephira, is in Hebrew, Keter, which means crown. And at the very bottom is the tenth Sephira, Sephira, which is in Hebrew, Malkut, which means kingdom, physical planet, all physical creation. Mm -hmm. So really, what's happening on this is you're looking at a way of describing the creation of the entire cosmos and everything that is. But it's not until you get to the 10th that you actually have solid stuff. So most of creation is invisible to us. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. So what an idea. Okay, but so we get to the solid stuff. Yeah. And then we forget all the other stuff. Right? Yeah, that tends to happen. So what what's up with that? Well <laughs> <laughs> uh, according to according to Kabbalah, and, and again this uh, I, the the idea is my journey in Kabbalah. Uh-huh. So I'm not sitting here as a Kabbalistic expert. As a matter of fact, I don't know if you could ever find one, truly. There's so much to delve into, to find, to discover. So I'm sharing with you some of my discoveries and how it's applied to my life, and hopefully it'll shed a little light. But um, so there comes a point where the human... Oh, I got I to gotta refer back to the tree. So you start, you start with Keter, the crown, and here's how it moves. It goes from the center top... To, the, to your right, the one to the right, no, to the, no, no, the other one, the blue one, yeah, 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 <laughs> that one, <laughs> the other right. <laughs> She's doing a thing for y'all. Stage right house right, okay. It's her right. And right. that would be um, chokmah, which is wisdom. Then it moves over to the far left, bina, understanding. Then comes to center. That is actually an invisible sephiro called da'at, which is uh, 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 knowledge, knowledge gained through experience. So we're going to let go of that one for a while because it's a bridge. Now keep going to the right. Uh, right. Right there. Yeah. Now that is chesed, which means grace. Then mm. shoot all the way over to the left again, to the red one. That is uh, gevura, which means a strength or uh, severity. And then we go to the center, gold. That is tiferet, which is beauty. So when I sang a little while ago, and use the word beauty, that's what I was referring to. And that's where we find, uh, that is what is embodied there is the Christos consciousness, the Christ consciousness. You know, Yeshua wasn't the only Christ. Mm -hmm. We are mm -hmm. all, that is latent within each of us mm -hmm. to be discovered. And then we move over to the green one over there. Yeah, That is Nitzach, which means victory. And then over to the right, left, yeah, that is Hod, which means splendor, then to the center, which is, uh, that's uh, the, the ninth sephiroth, that is yesod, 
which means foundation, and then Malkut. So that was the descent on the tree. Each emanation holds everything in it that will show up in the next emanations. So Keter at the top has everything. And in fact, is the, is the unlimited potential for everything. I love this. Oh, it's so cool. I love this so much. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You know what? What? You just reminded me of the creation story that you told me. Yes. On, when we talked on the phone. Oh, yes, yes. Why don't you share that with everybody? I think I will. Okay, then. Which, which one was it? <laughs> oh, um, oh, oh, yeah. yeah. Mm. The thing about puberty. Ah, yes, yes. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, in beginning, in beginning, Bereshit uh, bara, in beginnings, because the doctrine is that there are cycles of manifestation. It's not just a one-shot deal. <laughs> That's a relief. Cycle, yeah, <laughs> it is. Cycles of manifestation. When the living one, or specifically in the, in the Bible, in Hebrew it says Elohim. And we're accustomed to saying in the beginning God. That can work just fine. However, in Hebrew it is in beginnings, the Elohim. And Elohim means strong one, strong mighty ones. Surprised? Mm -hmm. That's a whole other dimension. I'm getting chills created the heavens and the earth. I want to skip ahead to day six because it's most important. We have been taught, or at least I was taught traditionally, that God made Adam a dude. <laughs> and out of this dude extracted Eve, his side chick. <laughs> <laughs> the Bible in Hebrew the language in which these words were written says that the Elohim created Adam. Not Adam, but Adam. And Adam means earth being. Earth being. Adam is male and female, masculine and feminine. Perfect unity, or echud, or echad in Hebrew. Perfect unity. And then from that unity, separated the, the, uh, the two humans, Ish and Isha. Masculine one and the feminine one. So in Kabbalah, we don't think of masculine and feminine specifically and exclusively as male and female, but really more as qualities of energy, functions of consciousness, so to speak. In each person is an equal amount of masculine and feminine energy. How it presents... Now that's an entirely different thing. All kinds of variations are possible. And this is important to know because it's helped to solve a few emotional, mental conundrums for me. I came up at a time when uh, I was taught to be afraid of and therefore antagonistic to certain expressions of gender and sexuality. Some of y'all are hip to what I'm putting out there. I can't anymore. All traces of that kind of bias are gone in me. Mm -hmm. Completely gone. <laughs> and if anything ever shows up, I know I got the tools to handle it. Because mm -hmm. I'm not going to be walking around on this earth biased against anybody. Mm -hmm. Bless anybody. You. Bless your heart. I got to. I can't help it. I, well, good. What am I going to do? Yeah, so you got to get that hook and maybe hook some others into yeah, that. Yeah, right? he's yeah. He's a fisher to get some Yeah. So, um, it, it's so wonderful about the, the male and the female. And then when, when we spoke on the phone, we also talked about, um, I, that I mentioned that I've been sharing various metaphors of the fall from grace with folks here. Mm -hmm. And I loved your story of the fall from grace. That's the part about the... What did I say? Puberty. Oh, God, oh, that's what I said. Oh, <laughs> don't tell anybody that I said puberty. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> right. Okay. So, so yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 oh. oh. <laughs> Sorry. No, this is okay. This is perfect. Did so, I touch a nerve? <laughs> no, no, no. This is perfect. This right. is perfect. So, um, what is often referred to as the Garden of Eden in Hebrew is Gan Eden, which is uh, the, the 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 Garden of Pleasure, of joy, of pleasure. One of the other things in Kabbalah is that uh, there's no shying away from no shying away from telling the truth about sex. Mm -hmm. 
in our world, especially in Western culture, we are taught various things about sex, mostly things that will produce shame and mm -hmm. guilt mm -hmm. and their manifestations, which is either an unnecessary subjugation or just a wow! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which can be fun, but it also leads to a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, Kabbalah teaches much more. Sex, as it appears in humans, is a particular thing. Yes, 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 yes. Lovely, wonderful, wonderful. But it has much deeper uh, meaning. So in Gan Eden, everything is available. Everything, everything. And in the innocence of, of, of childhood, in a sense, Ish and Isha were there. In the Garden of Eden. In the Garden. Gani, Gani in the Garden. Gani. Yeah. yeah. The fall represents, uh, there's the, the two trees. You know, you got the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and bad. Tree of life, it's a chaim, life, 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 life. Knowledge and good and bad is an unveiling. The serpent, you all know about the snake, right? Mm -hmm. The serpent that spoke to Isha, Interesting, he spoke to Isha, not to Ish. Why did he speak to the woman and not to the man? Contemplation, interesting there. But spoke to Isha, was not evil. The serpent was not evil. In Hebrew, the serpent is known as Nachash. Nachash. He is a, an oracle, teller of truth. So when he proposed the idea, he said, uh, you know, I know that uh, the Elohim said not to eat this fruit tree, but you eat it, you're not going to truly die. You won't surely die. And he was right. But what happened? Eating the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is like going from childhood into puberty. Now, suddenly, I'm aware of energies, of powers within me that I didn't know were there. Y'all remember that trip, don't you? Yeah, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's a whole other sermon, babe. Well, yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. But the most important thing there was the need for learning how to use those powers mm -hmm. responsibly. Mm -hmm. And that's the journey <laughs> of humanity. We are learning to use the powers that lay latent within us responsibly in a way that benefits ourselves, of course, and does no harm to anyone else and, in fact, benefits all of creation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how have you l learned... Sorry, I didn't mean to jump on your... Oh, please jump that on it. That would have been nice to have settled that for a minute. Use our powers responsibly. Yes. <laughs> how has... I, I want to talk about two things. I yes. want to make sure we have time. Yes. I want to talk about how, a specific example of how Kabbalah has benefited your life. Yes. And I also want to talk about that thing we talked about, about the, the, the pillars of... Um, oh, excellent. ...severity and grace. Yes, because yes, yes. Severity and grace seems really up for a lot of people right now, myself included. Yes. My whole life, but really right now with COVID and all this stuff going on. Yes, so yes. let's talk about first, if yeah. you can give, me a or give us oh, a specific boy. example of a way that Kabbalah has I'll give you a you. specific example that is fresh off the presses. Mm -hmm. um, uh, this morning, in, um, I, I have um, a practice of evening and morning meditations. Mm -hmm. And in my morning meditation this morning, as an answer to a question, I was able to, using the tools of Kabbalah, detect a pattern, an old, old, old pattern that has been restraining um, certain aspects of success or expression for me. Mm. And specifically, it had to do with music. Um, and so, I, this part I have to kind of keep quiet because there's a project that I'm work, working mm -hmm. for. And so now my approach is entirely different. I am freed. Mm -hmm. Or that is to say I have the opportunity to be free if I choose to take it. Mm -hmm. But it was the revealing of the pattern of thought that was important here for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What is, can you say a little bit more, more specifically what the path of freedom looks like for you mm -hmm. without, without yes. divulging what Not you're a working on? Not a problem at all. Okay. The path of freedom is like, ah, it's the feeling of being a toddler running around naked. <laughs> and that's the good thing. That's a it's good a thing. good thing. Yeah. To the yeah. toddler, it's a great thing. Yeah. yeah. You know? 
It's only when we get some sense of shame and, you know, this sort of stuff. I'm not suggesting people just <laughs> go around and buck well, wild. May, maybe wait till you all get home, if that would be okay. <laughs> but <laughs> actually, it's not a bad idea <laughs> yeah, either, yeah. In, the, in the comfort of the home. Yeah. Every once in a while, I'll take them all off and just, la, la, la. But, <laughs> but, from, but it is, it, it's that feeling. It's being unencumbered. unencumbered. The feeling is unencumbered by thoughts of less than, uh, not good enough. That. Anybody familiar Limits. with that? Yeah, yeah. So, so the the path was to recognize that you were imposing this stricture of feeling yes. less than and not good at, and and working with Kabbalah brought you to a place where you realized you could throw all of that aside and just run aside, run run around in your innocence and yes. trust. Yes. Yeah. Did you enjoy that song that I sang? Yes. Okay. You might not know <laughs> this, but those of us who create art can often be encumbered by doubts. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, I have a story about that. Ooh, go. So yeah, yeah. many of us on, in this center um, re read Kusala Bhikshu, it's a monk who's sitting back there somewhere. Yeah, oh, he's over there? Okay, so Kusala Bhikshu, is, there he is, right next to Jesus. Look at that. Yeah, there you go. Yeshua. Oh, go. Yeah. Cool. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so he's, um, he's a, a monk, and, he, and part of his, his ministry as a monk is to post witty things on Facebook. And one of my favorite things that he ever posted was this, this picture that said, read a man a book and he gets a good story. Teach a man to write a book and he faces a lifetime of doubt and fear. <laughs> <laughs> Your point exactly. Exactly, right? exactly, <laughs> right, exactly. Right. And the, the <laughs> doubts and the fears show up in intensely personal ways. Yeah. They are opportunities for growth. Absolutely. Is what they are. Yeah. And I got the opportunity shown to me quite clearly this morning. It's fresh off the presses, y'all. Yeah. And this sort of stuff happens frequently. This is, this is my life. Yeah. I'm rolling around with this in my sight everywhere yeah. I go. The, and, the, you know, the other thing about doubt and fear, I just had a conversation with somebody sort of along these lines, is that um, it's a form of suffering, right? Yes. And, and, and honestly, I think the, the deeper we go into this stuff, once we recognize the path, the path of, you know, what in your case was running around naked like a toddler. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> um, but once we recognize the path of the healing, whatever it is, we're almost grateful for the suffering and yeah. for the doubt and the fear yeah. because it allowed us to go deeper. Yeah. And, and I think the lesson in that is that so often, you know, particularly when we're spiritual and we're in a denomination like this and we're like, I shouldn't be having doubt, I shouldn't be having doubt, I shouldn't be having fear. Oh, yeah. It's not that. It's mm -hmm. just, it's like doing the work and saying, wow, this is a gift. Start, start from the place of this is a gift. This is here to cause me to go deeper into myself and to recognize, oh my gosh, there's a, there's a wild and crazy innocence that wants to burst through and do wonderful things. How about that? Yes! Yes! <laughs> I love that! Yeah. I love and, that. And I'm that. willing to bet that that song was even better because that, that is one of my favorites. That is one of, that's like my top 10, mm. top one Ray Davis hit. And oh. I, I bet that song was even better because of the doubt you had and the transcendence it is, of the doubt. It is better. It is better. Yeah. I, I sank into that song this morning. Mm. Uh, <sighs> yeah. We felt it. Yeah. We felt it. So that song was from Malkut to Keter. That song was Malkut to Keter. Seeing the living one in all things and everything and absolutely everything. Just like the, the reading. And that was a beautiful reading. You, oh my God. you picked it out, dude. Yeah, but... Yeah, but <laughs> yeah you did wow. a great job. Yeah. I mean, wow. I've so, read that passage so many times. And you, times. you okay. dropped your voice because it was fairly intimate. But yeah. Malkut to Keter is seeing what? Oh, Malkut, Malkut, the kingdom, mm -hmm. seeing the crown. Mm. Seeing all, uh, not enough time. You can do it. <laughs> seeing all of the living one in all of its infinite expressions. Mm. And I tend to use the, the term the living one. Uh, I'm cool with the word God. Mm. But that word doesn't exist in Hebrew. Mm. Right. It does. Yeah. It's a cool word, but it doesn't exist in Hebrew. And I'm drawn to Bereshit Bara in beginnings. I'm drawn to the first Western expressions. So you are, are uh, too many things. <laughs> too many things. Too many things. Okay. Too many things. So that song is 
looking out and seeing God in all of its forms. Looking at this chair here. Even that which is in, seeming inanimate is full of the ruach, full of life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Full of life. Yep. What would happen if we decided that that was true? What? Just decided as a Western culture, what would happen? What would happen? Oh my gosh. I know, it's so exciting, right? It is exciting to, yeah. to ponder. So yeah. let, me, let me let it be in me, and then, you know, yeah. maybe that hook will hook somebody hook. else and yeah. hook somebody else. Yeah, that's what we're doing here. Okay, good. We're a bunch All of right. hookers. We all go. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't mean that. That came out wrong. <laughs> 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 there's a marketing yes i was not planning it that's that's <laughs> not how, that's how to fill up these seats we're there's a bunch our, of hookers here come yeah. on yeah there's our banner <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> so ray yes. we're, we're gonna run a little bit over but i was so interested because because so so often when we get into a spiritual place we think it's all you know, I always say this to my friend Nipun, who's oh, also yeah. up there. He's up there somewhere. I don't know where he is. But anyway, it's a, this organization that's all about kindness. You've met Nipun. All about kindness and love. And I'm like, so you guys all sit around braiding each other's hair all the time? <laughs> and he's like, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> there are constraints as well. There are, there, are, there, is, uh, there are boundaries and things that we need to implement that aren't always pleasant for people. So can you talk a little I'd bit about Kabbalah? I'd be happy to, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so again, illustrated there, it's a chayim. You've got three pillars, yeah? Three, three columns, pillars. we'll call them pillars. Yeah. The central pillar, we'll talk about that next. Oh, ouch. The outer pillars. The one to your right, which is the tree's left, is the pillar of mercy. So each of the three sefirot that are in that pillar represent some aspect of mercy. The pillar to your left, the tree's right, is the pillar of severity. So each of these three sephirot are expressions, aspects of severity. And by severity, it means severity. <laughs> in particular, that center one, the one that is red, Gevura. Each of these sephirot have images. They have things that, are, that come with them. Its image is a king in a chariot with a sword. Like Spartacus. Up yeah, there. yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And, <laughs> and he's taking no excuses, asking no questions, knows exactly what to slay with impunity, with no mercy whatsoever. Think of the most severe, strict, strong, and you haven't even gotten close. <laughs> so when we talk about mm, releasing, I, I release and I let go, baby, that's Gavura chopping it up. <laughs> okay. Then. With no return. <laughs> yeah. These two pillars are equilibrated by the pillar of mercy, the center, or pillar of mildness, the center pillar. Mm -hmm. It equilibrates them. So there's energy moving back and forth, back and forth, between the pillars, through center pillar. Our objective, our, the, the way of return really is the center pillar, that middle pillar. Now that doesn't mean we never use the energies of the outer. There are times when you got to just say no. Mm -hmm. There are conditions on the planet created by people that must be stopped. Mm -hmm. No question about it, must be stopped. Climate change, I don't know your particular deal, but got to be stopped. Uh, certain kinds of abusive people, got to be stopped. And sometimes when handling those who seem to be the perpetuators, you might need to pull in a little bit of that mercy too. Mm -hmm. Because as the reading said, the living one is inhabiting all of it. We are all perfect expressions of the one. So we honor that as well. Mm -hmm. It's not a matter of chopping up people. But it is a matter of stopping behavior that is, destruct that is destructive. Now, me and my personal life, I've got to find that out too. Mm -hmm. 
if, there's, if there are destructive tendencies, to the things that inhibit the expression of the perfect will of the living one as me, I've got to use some of that Gavura energy. Mm-hmm. On the other hand, to be too strict on oneself is cruel. Mm-hmm. Got to have some of that. And the other side is chesed. Got to have some chesed energy as well, mm-hmm. which is hmm, uh, allowing, 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 allowing. Y'all, you, you, you digging? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Can, I, can I quote you from some uh, Please do. conversation we had? Um, yeah, because I'll in forget my office stuff. That time? Yeah. No, it's okay. In my office that time, we were talking about um, the civil rights movement. Oh, yeah. In, back with Dr. King, and you said in some ways it's different now. Dr. King's... Um, philosophy was right the wrongs but lift everybody up in the process and that to me sounds like a perfect balance of severity and grace it is he perfect he embodied it he did teachings embodied yeah Yeah. because he was not interested in disenfranchising anybody right you know you you remember the marches and there's everybody in there yeah everybody in there and you know i i like to put it this way truth be told yeah i'm cool with the idea of race I am. I, I think it's all beautiful and all that kind of thing. But fundamentally, it really isn't that true. <laughs> I, no, I, I get it. I, that's a whole different I, thing. I, I know. That's, another that's a conversation. whole different thing. And you've just offended a whole bunch of people. But I know. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, yeah, I mean, no, no, I'm kidding. But, but yeah. I know what you mean because I liken yeah. it to the untouchables in India. It's like, who made that? You know? right. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Who, who made up that somebody is untouchable because of their, their station in life? Who yeah. made up that somebody is untouchable because of the pigmentation? It's mm-hmm. pigmentation. It's yeah. biology. Yeah. It's like, and same thing with, you know, gay straight. It's like, it's biology. It's like, so all of a sudden we're going to start hating people with, say, blue eyes, right? Because right. it's biology. Right, right, right. right? It's yeah. Like, it's, like, it's, it's nonsensical. It's, yeah. So, so in, <laughs> in, in Kabbalah, looking at that tree, there's the descent down, involution. There's also evolution. And this is the thing that I, I, can, I can leave. Trust the truth that we are all evolving and we are all destined to consciously come into oneness with the one. Mm-hmm. That is what is taught in Kabbalah. And in so many other uh, paths that we are evolving, we are moving up, so moving up the tree. Mm-hmm. See? Uh, it takes effort. It takes d- concentration. It takes devotion. And so many things that we have to sort of figure out within. And these tools help. Yes. But we are all destined. Yeah. Whether it's this lifetime or... 10 lifetimes or 100 lifetimes, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. we're going to get there. So if somebody looks like they're driving a little bit slow in the, in the fast lane, <laughs> you know, don't, don't bore in on them. Just move on around and, and bless you. <laughs> right. Bless right. you. Bless you on your journey. <laughs> yeah. Bless you on your journey. See, now, I thought that was a metaphor. Like some of us are driving a little slower in the fast lane, but that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. You know? But what you, what you said is so beautiful, that we all are destined to move up, and yeah. that's okay. And, and we do participate in that, too. Again, it reminds me of many of the, you know, I have lots of spiritual threads going on, but I live with this Gurdjieff person over here pointing at him, uh-huh. that person over there that I live with, who often talks about that we, that we participate in conscious labors Yes. And intentional sucker, suffering. Intentional suffering. And suffering means allowing or yes. letting go yes. or being present with what is, conscious labors and intentional suffering. And that's, that to me seems to be the spiritual work that we do yes. to open ourselves up to the natural evolution that wants to come through yes. us. It is natural to evolve. Hence All we need the, to do is look at nature. Hence the idea of the evolution revolution. There you go. The evolution revolution. We choose... We choose this stage of evolution. We consciously choose by virtue of, mm, by virtue of the aspect of consciousness given to us by the living one. Mm-hmm. Lori and I speak of living one as me. Mm-hmm. That's my identity. Mm-hmm. I go by Ray Davis, but it's living one as me. Mm-hmm. And its desire is to re, 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 integrate consciously so we have to choose this we choose this level of of, which which means this evolution revolution means that i get to make the opportunity to make choices that can seem contrary or odd to the rest of the world so you take a little bit of derision you take a little bit of "Ah, ain't you kind of silly you know 
But uh, didn't we do that in junior high and middle school too? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I know. I, did. I don't know any band kids out here, but I was a band <laughs> kid, you know, <laughs> playing trumpet and play piccolo. A little piccolo, yeah, yeah you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. My buddy say, "I want to go play some basketball. I got to practice my trumpet." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But then I dig what I do, and come on, man, I can make somebody dance when I'm playing that horn. Come yes, on. Yes, you can. Yeah, oh, my you gosh. Know? You totally so, did what you did. So, uh, yeah, yeah, it's wonderful. So, yeah. Ray, last word. I'm going to give you the last word, and then we're going to move on. Okay, so, yeah. Any last word? Oy vey, it's time. Yeah, we're really so, late. <laughs> yeah. Oy vey. <laughs> I, I said oy vey, didn't I? Oy vey. <laughs> <laughs> the last word is, uh, ah, let not your heart be troubled. Mm. Believe in the living one. Believe also in me, as me. For in my mother, father's house are many dimensions, many mansions. If it weren't so, I would have told you. Oh, just got me again. I'll leave it be. Ah, oh, that's beautiful, right? Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so. Honestly, I feel like we've already prayed, but let's just take a moment just to turn within and just breathe into all of that wonder, all of that wisdom, all of that heart, all of that embodied knowing brought to us not only by our beloved Ray Davis, the living one masquerading as Ray Davis, <laughs> but also by the ancestors, by, by those beautiful, beautiful mystics that, that found the words and the symbols to describe all of this which is was true then and is true now that it was in the beginning and now and ever shall be world without end amen amen and so we anchor into that consciousness and just know that it that it, we trust it and that it blesses our lives in ways that we can't even imagine right now but we surrender to it we do the conscious labor of surrender and just allow it to be and allow it to inform us and to form us from the inside out and the outside in. Knowing that everything that comes our way, whether it's inner or outer, is a blessing for our evolution, for our revolution, for our coming home to the oneness that we are. I'm so grateful for the spiritual truth and so grateful to get to speak these words. I bless all paths to God, bless the transformation that has taken place, and I bless every single person here in this sacred sanctuary today. And with a heart that is filled with blessedness, we say thank you, Spirit. Thank you, love. And we release these words into the divine mystery. And together we say, and so it is. Thank you. So the second song is uh, a song sung from the opposite direction, from Keter, the crown, down to Malkut. It is as though the living one is looking around and saying, see, see that, see that? That's where I am, that's me. This is called The One Badum. Okay. More the story than the storybook, but um, but um. More the love and the loving look, but um, but um. I'm the eye behind the sky, where kites and strings and kind birds fly, but um, but um, but um, but um. In the whisper trees of forest green, but um, but um. In the desert flower unfolding, but um, but um. On the dark and silent soil sleep, from seed emerging, reaching deep, but um, but um, but um, but um. I am the I am the one, the one. Bye. 
Barum, barum. In the sweetness of your lover's kiss, barum, barum. When they say I love you more than this, barum, barum. And the autumn and the spring, the birds and bees and songs they sing, barum, 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 barum. I am the I am the one, the one. I am the I am. I am the I am the one. Badum badum badum, badum badum badum. Ba da 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 badum badum. Hey ya, oh hey ya, ba da 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 da, ba da 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 da, ba da 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 da. Hey ya, I'm the one, the all in all. I'm the beauty of things great and small. I am the darkness, I am the light. Say that you see me there and you're right. I'm the sight of your eyes as you blink, blink, blink. I'm the image in your mind as you think, think. I'm the multiverse, the nanoverse, in every verse after the last, before the first, from A age to A. More the story than the storybook. Badum, badum, hey ya, hey ya. More the love than the loving look. Badum, badum, ba da 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 da, ba da 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 da. Leo Lam. So we turn within and just bless this time together. We name it good and very good. We know that hearts have been opened and lives have been changed and that we have done the work not only for ourselves but for the entire world as we have joined together in tr truth and in faith and in consciousness and love and in wisdom. So we're so grateful, so grateful for this time together and in the spirit of that gratitude, we release these words into the divine mystery and together we say, and so it is. Thanks everybody, namaste.